In this video, we are welding a 1G open root on carbon steel. Now, one of the most challenging aspects of a groove weld can be that root pass. So we're going to do a deep dive into that root pass with a cellulose 6010. And of course, we're also going to cover that fill and cap. Let's get going. So if you're looking to challenge your open root plate or if you're looking to get an open root pipe ticket and you have no experience, it's not a bad idea to practice on plate. Pipe welds with the SMAW process can be completed with either a cellulose 6010 or 6011 or a 7018 low hydrogen electrode or even a combination of both. First thing you want to do is acquire your coupons for practicing. So for us, we're just using some inch and a half coupons with a 37 and a half degree bevel, which gives you a 75 degree included angle. We're doing this on 3 8 carbon steel, six inches long, and again, 3 8 of an inch thick. I always stress how important it is to have a next to perfect fit up, especially as a beginner. Along with having proper settings, having that consistent LAN and root opening is going to be the game changer. Whether you decide to do this with the bench grinder or with an angle grinder, that will be your choice. At the end of the day, I like to finish it with a file just to make sure that everything's nice and consistent. An important part here is to get rid of that burr on the inside of that groove. You don't want to have a false LAN meaning that this land could look larger than it actually is. For this demonstration, we're going to use a 332 land with a 332 root opening and a 1 8 of an inch electrode. I always like to take that 332 electrode to check it against the land and make sure that that's consistent all the way across. A lot of us like to use the flapper disc. One downside of a flapper wheel is that it can leave little inconsistent grooves and your land not being great as possible. I find a hard disc works way better on this. I'm going to be setting my machine to crisp and I'm going to weld this at around 77 amps. So you want to be somewhere between 75 and 85 amps depending on that machine. Setting myself up with a bit of arc force on the crisp side if you have it will really help this out. It'll give it a little bit more dig that we need. Now it's time to set our root opening on a flat surface. Let's butt those pieces up together. Make sure that we're not dog legged. Make sure that we're nice and even. I'm just using a 332 TIG wire and we're going to set that gap. Make sure you got your plate clamped down and we're going to put two tacks. In real life, you probably wouldn't be able to set your tacks on the back side, but these are coupons, so we're going to weld on the back side. No larger than three quarters of an inch and make sure that they're good tacks. Once you've got your plate tacked up, let's go grab some scrap material. I'm just using little pieces of angle iron and these are going to act as run on and runoff tabs. If there's any porosity, if there's any cold start, any cold lap undercut, it's going to go on to that run on tab and that runoff tab. With the plate all clean and tacked up, it's time to weld. Going back to the basics on this, we're holding a drag angle of about 10 degrees off of 90. Now, depending on how the keyhole reacts, will determine how much I'm going to whip or pause. In some cases, we drag the weld in. However, especially when I was starting out, you want to whip or step so you can hear the weld breaking down those sidewalls. Now a tie-in for a root weld is a little bit different than a regular fillet weld or anything outside of a groove weld. You want to just sort of weld over that tack. You want to heat it up. Once you get to the front side of that keyhole, you're going to drop down, you're going to pause. You're going to let that fill and then you're going to move out and go back to your regular travel speed. Everything's looking really good on this root weld, except the front side is not the important part. The important side is the back to make sure that we're nice and fused. There's no undercut. We didn't get any root suck back. There's good tie-ins. Now let's have a look at this. Here we've got two separate tie-ins. One is a good tie-in. The other one is a poor tie-in. You can see the lack of fusion. You can see where we didn't burn into the side of that wall. This here got a little bit cold. The welder moved a little bit too fast. If you're doing a test and you're allowed a grinder, one technique is to feather out that tack or to ramp it a little bit. And that's just really to kind of thin it out closest to where you're going to tie in to make that tie in a little bit more seamless. Now we're going to move on to our fill and cap or also known as your hot pass. With that root pass complete, we ran the grinder through it quickly and that's just to break down any high spots we have. We're going to run one large stringer for the hot pass and then we're going to run a nice little weave for the cap. 
Now, when you're doing that fill pass, it's really important not to burn your edges away. That means your top edges of your plate. You want to sort of rock or you kind of want to carry that weld metal up the side wall. If we burn away a little bit, it's fine because we're going to cover it with a cap. But the idea is to come as close as possible without burning into that edge. I usually like to leave between a sixteenth and an eighth of an inch from the top. At 118 amps, this weld is going to run nice and hot, doing a small little wiggle side to side, making sure I don't melt away the side walls at the top of the groove. Once I'm finished, this weld will sit about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch from the top of that groove. You can see how I still have the top of my bevels. These are going to act as my guide. You don't want to weld any larger than those two bevels. Basically, your cap is going to be the size of that groove, maybe a little bit larger by a sixteenth. Your cap should bite the sides of the bevels enough to not leave any undercut or any underfill. Now, there's a few different techniques whenever we come to capping it. We can do a weave or we can do stringer passes. So we're lighting up and we're doing a weave pattern here. And unfortunately, we did lose our arc shots for our fill and cap. However, this is a basic weave. We're doing a herringbone weave and we're moving quick across the middle and pausing on those sides. Now, the important thing is not to progress forward too quick and you don't want to burn over those edges of the groove. The top of the bevel should remain that same width the whole way. A good rule of thumb for this thickness of material is to be about a dime high and a dime wide. Now, option two is to complete that cap with stringer welds. So here's a good example of a three pass cap. The stringers are held very close together and they're overlapping each other by up to two thirds. Once complete, we examine. We're looking for a uniform bead here all the way across, free of any defects such as undercut, overlap, lack of fusion, any pinholes like that or anything that would have to be repaired. There you have it, our finished product. We even decided to cut the ends off to view the cross section. We can see good reinforcement on the root and good height on that cap. And here is one where I like keeping one half welded to be able to show our students the progression. You can see the root pass, you can see the fill, and you can see the cap. That was your 1G open root 6010 7018 fill and cap on carbon steel. So I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. The next position to do for us is the horizontal. And that video will be coming out next. And then we go into the vertical and then hopefully even do some overhead. I really like the vertical because we get to weave. We can do stringers or we can do weaves. Horizontal, this is going to be straight stringers. All right, so we'll catch you on the next one. And as always, keep those lenses clean. <laughs>